Hey guys, what's up? Check out what I got here. It's the Sony RX10 III. Oh yeah, that's right, number three. So this has the 24 to 600 millimeter f2.4 to f4 aperture lens. So I'm just gonna do a quick open box here so you can see what it looks like while I go over some of the key features. So the retail price is approximately $1,500 or $1,498 US at BH Photo. And again, the lens is a 24 to 600 millimeter equivalent zoom. Here's the neck strap. And here is the USB charger. And that's the USB cable. And there is the battery. Now pulling the actual camera out itself, this uh, camera is quite heavy. It's not light, but uh, when you're using the neck strap, you know, it's not too bad. I actually went to the zoo with it and was holding it all day, and I really didn't have any problem with the weight at all. But when I was initially taking it out of the bag here, it was quite heavy. It's actually 2.41 pounds, in fact. Now, the build quality is quite good. It's rugged. You know, there's the lens hood. Just spinning it around here so you can see you know just how it looks in my hands you can see it's quite large the bottom of it is nice the tripod mount is all the way on the back just because of where the sensor is actually located in the camera the way that the internal chassis is the lens actually goes in quite far you can see the ports on the side there there's also a focus hold button check out the pinch lens hood there it's a pinch style really nice i love that style the lens also has the t-star coating on it and the manual focus and zoom rings are quite nice. The dampening feels really good. Notice the 3 inch high resolution articulating screen. That's as far up as it goes. It doesn't go all the way. Alright, so now I got it on the turntable and you can see where the memory card goes there on the side. It takes the SD style. I'm actually using the SDXC PNY uh, high speed card so I can record the 4K video at 100 megabits per second. And the quality is exceptionally good as you'll see. Just like the RX104 I recently reviewed, the sensor is the same. It's a 20.1 megapixel Exmor RS backlit sensor, and it's got it's a stack design. It's got the DRAM chip on there, which allows for the very high speed shooting, which gives you slow mo up to 960 frames per second. Now get a closer look at this focus hold button here on the side. An excellent feature, which is very helpful when you know you need to override the focus closer look at the dial on the back there and notice on the bottom on the front here we have the manual switch for focus modes so here's the shutter button and the zoom toggle and on and off switch module you could see there and you control all that pretty much with your pointer finger looking at the top here you could see the mode dial and notice how the menu button is on the left as well and here is the electronic viewfinder so it's a live view and it'll show you what's going on no matter what your settings are which is a lot different than an optical viewfinder and on top here you can see the built-in LCD panel which is killer for night shooting it has a button there to light it up so you can see at night without using the bright LCD screen which will you know illuminate your whole face if you're trying to be stealthy alright so when you flip the on switch you can see how the camera lens extends a bit and that's 24 millimeter and here's what it looks like when you zoom all the way to 600 and you can see it comes out quite a bit and I'm just throwing showing you a few angles there and this is what it looks like from the back of the camera when you zoom in That's 600 millimeter and then when you zoom back out this is what you get and there's the lens and zooming out in the lab scene you can see just how much range all right so you got the memory card door here pops right open like so and you just press and the memory card comes out like so all right so here we have the port doors and we got your multi-purpose usb and your micro hdmi there and you also have a headphone jack, 1 8 inch, and a 1 8 inch microphone jack. That's nice, both are included. Alright, so here you can see the manual aperture, and you can see how that turns. And you could declick it down here on the right, there's a uh, declick switch. And if you declick it, it'll actually go nice and smooth. See, now it's not clicking. Now it's clicking again, see that? And then this is your manual zoom, and you can see how good that works. The feedback's excellent. Very similar to, you know, an actual zoom lens as far as response and speed goes. It actually has an ease in, ease out effect as well, which is really good for video. 
in particular. And this is the manual focus ring. Now both of these rings feel excellent. I mean they feel buttery, the dampening is really good, especially on this focus ring, the dampening is excellent. I just wanted to point out there's a little nub here on the bottom of the lens so when you have the camera down without the lens hood um, these focus the focus ring and the zoom ring aren't going to hit the uh, you know the ground this will like prevent that from happening they put a little nub there I like that just noticed it and then of course we have the battery door here it's got this slide lock design and it's got the little blue tab on the top you just pop that up and the battery pops out like so as you can see and of course you have your different modes here. You have the shutter priority mode, manual mode, this is memory recall mode, this is video mode, high frame rate shooting mode for the awesome slow motion features, this is panorama mode for panorama photography, scene mode, auto is very powerful and it'll utilize all the scene recognition technology and try to pick the right settings depending on what you're shooting. And P is pretty much auto as well, except it allows you to change a few features. Aperture priority, of course. That's what I usually use. We have a really nice exposure comp wheel here, and the feedback is quite hard. You know, like the, it's hard to click it, so you're definitely not going to accidentally turn this, which tends to happen with exposure comp wheels, I notice. And up here you have the zoom lever above the shutter button, and this is the on-off switch here. It's an on-off toggle type design. It actually slides left and right. And then notice how there's a thread here on the shutter buttons. So here is the multi-purpose hot shoe here. I just wanted to show you that a little closer. And also note the stereo microphone on the top there. And this little indicator shows you where the actual sensor is on the camera itself. Like where it is in the body. Alright guys, we also have this control wheel here in the back, which is nice. You could use that and you could program that for what you want. And here's the record button. You got an AEL button, also the zoom, and the function button, which I tend to use a lot, which brings you to that function menu. Alright, so here's some focus testing in the lab, and I'm zoomed all the way in at 600 millimeter, pretty much. And you can see just how fast it is, and also the separation you can get. So in shooting 4K, these are the settings that I had set, and I shot 24P at 100 megabits. So this is actually downscaled to 1080P for the review, but I have a separate 4K sample video, you know, footage that's up already at the super high res. So you can check that out in a separate video, but due to obviously all the other recording I did of the camera and whatnot, that's at 1080. So. This is actually downscaled 4K video footage. Now the focus transitions are quite smooth. It did struggle a little bit going to the background out of focus lights there. So I added a photo to the wall and then it transitioned no problem. And as you can see it comes back to the dollar. And just look at that detail. I mean the sharpness detail is so crisp from the high resolution 4K abilities. And um, you know Sony really is pumping out some quality here. Just an aperture test here. This is f3.5, and I'm just turning the aperture all the way to f16. That's f16. Manual aperture switch I'm set to off here. So let me turn that on so you can see the difference. Now I'm going through, but it's clicking. I took my tripod head and mounted it to the Revo camera dolly and uh, got this footage quick. It makes for some fun stuff. I could see utilizing this in a, in a lot of different ways, but I just wanted to try it out, and it, uh, you know, it worked really good. It was fun. Alrighty, so here we are in Capture One Pro, 
and I just wanted to go over the sample photos and of course high ISO testing I'm gonna start with first so let me just zoom in here so you can see what 12,800 looks like and the information below uh, the photo right here is where you can see the you know the different settings and whatnot just so you, so you know when you're watching along viewing these photos so you can see here 12,800 it is usable but obviously the image you know got a little muddy it's like the best way to describe it like the details just kind of mud together and um, you know but still overall the quality is quite good now as I scroll through here you'll see the details start to come back as I go down in ISO or sensor sensitivity that's what that stands for so you can see here at uh, 3200 the details really starting to come back 1600 you got even more detail and 800 you could see the fine lines really starting to come into fruition and uh, 400 200 and 100 just going over a few more lab photos here I got one shot wide open here f2.4 at the effect of 24 millimeter and you can see what kind of detail this sucker captures and you can see it's pretty good and you can see the separation here in the foreground with the train and the lights in the background there and that's wide open and then I stopped it down to f4 here so you can see wide open versus f4 it's pretty close the wide open is very sharp depth of field get, becomes a little bit more though at f4 for sure now zoomed in a bit here I just took a couple of shots at varying focal lengths so you can see how the background separates and stuff the difference there's f5.6 versus f4 and here's f5.6 and here's f4 at 220 millimeter or approximately 600 is how when you factor in the crop factor and you can see there now clear image zoom this is what it looks like and you can see it's just a digital zoom but it does it does yield you quite a bit more reach and the quality is pretty good uh, it does degrade a little bit though as you can see compared to the 600 millimeter you know it's, it's really literally just enhancing it like Photoshop style but it does a pretty good job and here again is 220 millimeter or 600 millimeter and this is at f5.6 so you can see it crisps up just a little bit compared to f4 here it is at f4 it's very close very close it crisps up a little bit but you know not that much but it is noticeable all right so i just wanted to show you a couple of apertures looking at the train at 600 millimeter and this is as close as i can get so this is minimum focus distance at 600 millimeter and it's wide open at f4 all right now here's f5.6 and you can notice how the background changes see f4 f5.6 here's f8 and here's f16 so that's what you can expect to get separation wise when set up in a scenario similar to this all right guys let's move on I took a ton of real world photos and I'm just gonna blast through them here pretty quick so you can see what this camera is capable of in the real world so here's a shot of that airplane and you'll see this in the video as well coming up after this here's another shot of just a weed here that I zoomed in at to 600 millimeter and you can see this one I slightly enhanced so I add a little bit more black to it I'll just zoom in so you can get an idea of the detail and as you can see it's quite good ISO 800 there and here's some flowers on the deck and you can zoom in to create all sorts of different compositions and just so you can see the sharpness look at the water droplets it's pretty remarkable and the separation is quite nice as well you can see how creamy the background bouquet area is here's some moving water I like the way this looks I actually zoomed or focused on the water itself here's another shot kinda like the way that this one came out this is at one eighth of a second so you get that nice bit of motion capture and that's what's cool about such a, a lens with such versatility is you can zoom in and zoom out and get all sorts of different compositions depending on what you're focusing on here I focused on the leaves and here's another one zoomed all the way in so you can see what kind of cool effects you can get you know so here's Bones Jones and you can see the sharpness is excellent 
A lot of detail there. And here's just a landscape scene. Here's Layla on the swing. Just zoom in, show you the sharpness. Here's another one zoomed in more. So this is at 600 millimeter. And that was just hand holding. F4 wide open. Here's a dog hanging out. Marley. And you can see just how good that looks, the detail. Here's a nameplate and some text there so you can see the ridiculously good sharpness quality captured. And just a tree, show you the background and the foreground. And here's just a depth of field fall off type shot so you can see the uh, bouquet balls get bigger from the uh, you know stainless steel specular highlights. Just some nuts on the ground. This was a crazy beehive inside the car. I just took a snapshot of it so you can see it. Really nothing other than a cool beehive. <laughs> Um, this is just the antenna on that car. I thought this was a cool separation shot. And it also had a pattern here, which uh, works for our current photography challenge on the forum, which is patterns. Here's a cool Hess truck a lot of people get for Christmas. Another angle. And this is just what it looked like, the background looks like. So you can see the background's completely out of focus. And when you focus on the background, now you can see the truck is completely out of focus in the foreground. And this is ISO 10,000. So this is real world super high ISO. This is 12,800 and you can see it's pretty noisy there. But you know, overall it still captured the photo and the detail is reasonably good. A couple more really high ISO. These are all 12,800. And this is using the flash, the on-camera flash. So you can see it does a really good job. Even when zoomed in quite a bit, the lens doesn't seem to cause a shadow issue like I was afraid of. This is at 105 millimeter equivalent. So this is like 200, uh, approximately 200 millimeter, and there's no shadow on the bottom caused by the flash, so or by the lens sticking out. You know what I mean? The lens sticks out and it'll block the flash sometimes. So I didn't seem to have a problem here all the way up to 200. I did pop the lens hood off for that, for these uh, flash test shots. So here's a flash versus no flash. You could see just what the difference looks like, and the natural light is so much better as far as texture and depth. The flash kind of flattens the image out. You know, that's the uh, on-camera flash. That's what, you, what happens when you use it. Here's another one with the flash and then without the flash. You can see how much better the image looks, though, when using the flash in high ISO, low-light environments. So here we have much more detail, much more usable image than this one. But, you know, you lose a little bit of that real-world lighting look. And these are just no flash, super high ISO again, 12,800. And you can see the quality is, you know, it's definitely noisy, but, uh, you know, the images are still usable. I mean, the captures are still there. Captured a moment of my boy here playing. He's, he's recovering from his broken leg still. Oh, this is an auto HDR. I just wanted to show you. I have a couple more of those I want to show you as well. Just another shot of um, ISO 10,000, but had the letters here so you can see the detail. And this is at 600 millimeter, by the way, handheld, really low light couple more Jace. Here's my dad with the background extremely bright and you can see the details really good. I was pretty happy with that. And this is just another one I used for the pattern challenge. Here's one of Jace on the swing, actually captured while swinging. I didn't have the shutter fast enough. It was only at 1 250th of a second. But you can see the detail is still quite good and the focus looks like it captured him quite well. I just needed a faster shutter speed and this would be sharper. So if I was at 1 400th of a second, for example, it would probably be tack sharp, but I was just taking snapshots. And here's a few more shots I took for the pattern challenge. Just some playground stuff. Here's a couple ducks, another shot for the pattern challenge. I look at the detail on this um, flower here. It's amazing. Clarity. I just want to show you that. A couple more patterns. And here's another pattern, but I, I really like the way this one came out. Look at that 3D pop this image has, because the background's completely, you know, blurred away. And the whole flower is pretty sharp, thanks to the one-inch sensor. So the quality is quite good on this particular shot. Here's a few more. I was actually using the Hoya UV filter, and you can see the color changed pretty significantly. Here's a street scene that I wanted to show you, and this is wide open at 24 millimeter. And I just wanted to show you the corner sharpens here in particular. And you can see it's quite good. All the way up to the corner. Very usable. 
and all the way down there you can see the detail at the, the end and now I'm just gonna scroll through oh wait I got another one here I just zoomed into the sign on the right see the sign right here so this is 24 millimeter and you can see the sign Greenwich Ave and then at 600 millimeter the same sign and you can see just how sharp that is it's excellent now I'm just gonna go through the rest of the focal length so you can see the range Right, that's 600 millimeter. All the end jumps backing off now, zooming out, and that's all the way out. So over down at the Basher Kill here, I just want to show you some landscapes and some color. You can see the clarity and whatnot. Got a couple pretty good frames down at the Basher Kill. Love that place. There's a couple of uh, birdies crossing the street here. Family. Gotta love that. Check out the detail on this cattail see even in the highlights very very good and there's a bird it's landing see that detail is quite good as well there's another angle and here's the birds again they were just crossing the street I kinda like this particular frame because you can see the background fall off of the road and I just like the way that it looked you could see that layering effect you can get when you have the camera low to the ground um, otherwise it's a decent image but and here's another one just showing you some separation and another one of the rust detail and separation you can see just how sharp that is it's really really good there's a moon image this particular photo didn't really come out that great there was so much atmospheric distortion in front of the moon the clouds were just scrolling past but for just a snapshot of the moon I thought it came out pretty decent the video came out pretty awesome on the moon as well. This is at ISO 100, 1 one hundredth of a second, and F5. So, but like I said, due to the amount of atmosphere and clouds flowing in front of it, the detail's not really that good. So I just wanted to show you the auto HDR really quick, and this is pretty much what you get. You can see it adds a whole bunch of fill light, fills in the shadows, and this was on level six, by the way. This one was also on level six. And you can see just how much shadow information it fills in. Now this I lowered it to level 4. And you can see this one looks a little bit better. It's not quite as ridiculous looking. So that's with nothing. And this is Auto HDR level 4. Did a pretty good job in my opinion. Here's another one. And you can see it fills in the shadows and jacks up the saturation quite a bit. Alright guys, let's move on to the zoo photos now. I went to the Binghamton Zoo at Ross Park with Layla and her extended day class, and it was a really great time. And I gotta tell you, the RX-10 Mark III was probably one of the best cameras imaginable to have for a zoo trip. I mean, it's a point-and-shoot with 600 millimeter range, so how can you go wrong with that? And just look at some of these shots I got. Exceptionally good quality. I mean for a zoo this is perfect. The reach and plus it's not too cumbersome and heavy to carry around so shooting through the fences you can get unbelievable shots in detail as you can see here. Well, they had a little racetrack here for the tortoises I guess. The cats didn't really look that happy here. Now shooting into glass you're gonna get some nasty reflections and glare of course but a polarizer filter can help you with this. I didn't have one handy at the time but um, just wanted to show you what you actually get. Now looking through the fence, this fence was a little further away so you can still see it in the foreground, but still, not bad. I mean, shooting through it looks quite good in the background, out of focus area. Here's one of Layla. Here's the owl. Woo. And I thought it was pretty cool looking because it was white. Here's a cool Arctic fox. And check out this eagle. He had a couple eagles there. Unbelievable. And this is shooting through fences, of course, and you can see the detail is just excellent nice and crisp. Now this one the camera actually focused on the fence but um, you can actually switch the camera to direct manual focus mode and you can just tweak the focus a little bit with the focus ring and then hold the focus hold button and adjust the image and take the shot that way. That's what I ended up doing a couple of times when the camera focused on the fence. That particular shot it, I forgot to do it though and I just wanted to show you that it will lock on the, on the fence in front um, oftentimes, and you can just override that, like I said, by using the direct manual focus mode and the focus hold button. Here's a cool peacock, or whatever these things are called. Had a couple of leopards and stuff there. 
This was actually a snow leopard they had. Just a lantern they had. Here's a couple more snakes. Here's a penguin. And another snake. And you can zoom in. See that? Zoom in, right? Get a better shot. Uh, just another pattern image. And here's one of Layla posing. So cute. Just show you some of the detail there. And here's another pattern image. And a cat. And I don't know what this thing is called. Looks like a possum or some kind of weird um, fox of some sort. But anyway, that is it for the sample photos. Here's a zoom range test, and just to let you know, I have the zoom speed set to normal. You can change it to fast, though, and it'll zoom faster while recording video. But I prefer it uh, zooming slow like this. It just looks smoother, and, uh, you know, the quality is just better, in my opinion. Here's with zoom speed on the faster mode. And this is how it normally zooms, nice and slow. With such a range, you know, I'm at 600 millimeter here on the looking at the top of the plane, but uh, notice the exposure is a bit dark, so I just raised the exposure comp a bit while recording, and you know, as you can see, look at that. All right, in this clip, I'm starting off at 600 millimeter, and I really wanted to just show you the incredible separation you can get from the background. And you can see here, I pause for a second as the background is starting to come back. You know, you'd have no idea that it was a cool little river scene. Now that I pan all the way out, you can see all the detail. Hey buddy, who's my boy? Yes. Oh, good boy. Yes. 
You chilling? It's a F9, 150th of a second. Auto ISO. So it's a full moon and I went out there to uh, try to get some footage of it and I gotta tell you I got the best footage I've ever gotten of the moon. 600 millimeter is enough zoom to get this type of footage and this is at 4k downscaled for 1080 for the review. Now using all the digital zoom you pretty much fill the frame with the moon and you know when you're zoomed in this much you could see just unbelievable detail. And uh, it does a really good job enhancing it because it's technically just, you know, like enlarging it. A bird just flew across. Do you see that? That was pretty cool. But just look how quick it moves when you're zoomed in. And this is really good quality. Like, I can't wait to watch this on the TV. I'm just going to zoom out real quick so you can see just how small the moon looks at 24 millimeter versus full digital zoom and all that. Looks like a ball really has some nice depth to it. Slow-mo time, but first this is regular speed footage. The settings for the high frame rate shooting are just below the regular quality settings for the video. And here's 240 frames per second. Here's 480 frames per second. And here is 960 frames per second. And I'm just going to go back to normal speed quick so you can see just how fast the water is actually flowing regularly. And here's back to 480. Some more 480 footage. Now the 240 is definitely the best quality for sure. 480 you'd start to see a little bit of degradation, but the 960 is noticeably degraded. Here's 240 again. You could see a little bit of uh, purple fringing here on the highlights and uh, a little bit more on the 480. Overall though, great quality. All right, guys, so I just wanted to show you quick on the Sony cameras, the RX10 III included, the function button is the place to be. Check this out. Hit the function button. It brings up this quick menu, and I'm going to show you where you can customize this menu. But these are all the key features that you need to get to quickly, such as drive mode. This is what speed you're shooting at. You got single shooting, or you got continuous shooting, or you got high speed shooting. That's what this is. And then you have the self timer, of course. You can set the self timer for bracketing. Very powerful. A lot of different features there. You can bracket a bunch of different stuff. So let me just hit the function button again. And this one here is white balance. You can go in there and you can change your white balance. 
You could set a custom white balance like so. If you go to this temperature filter one, you can just set your temperature. If you use the right side toggle, you can go down. And I actually want to have this set to 32, which is what the lab is calibrated for. So I'm just going to set that like that. Now if I go back to the function menu, you can select your focus mode, focus area, see that? Here's the focus area. And right now it's set to center. I'm going to change it to flexible spot, but there's all these other features, expandable flexible spot, lock on AF, wide mode, which will use the entire sensor area, and center. I'm just going to go to medium flexible spot, and now you can move that around. I'm going to put it over here by the dollar, and that's where I'm going to lock the focus. One other thing I wanted to show you in the function menu is metering modes. You got metering modes here, you got multi, which will use the entire sensor area and scene recognition technology to prioritize where it's gonna, you know, expose the highlights and whatnot. The center is gonna use the center area as the priority, and then spot is gonna use just the very center for the metering priority. And that's basically, you know, the exposure value is what that means. So if we go back to the function, you have a couple other features here. Shooting mode, it's an aperture priority mode. This is picture profile. This is good for video and, and you can change that to different profiles so you can get different looks to your photos or your video. I'm just gonna leave it off for now. The PP7 is the S-Log2, just so you know. And then you got picture effect. Now picture effect is really cool. This is the fun modes like toy camera, pop, posterization, all sorts of cool stuff like that. Illustration mode, partial color. And if you use the arrow, you can change the partial color to yellow, red, see that? Got high contrast black and white, painting, whole bunch of cool stuff. Rich black and white, really good. You got mini, miniature mode, watercolor, illustration mode, which is one of my favorites. I've shown you that many times in other videos. One other thing I wanted to show you was the creative style. Now, this is the way that the camera is by default going to process your JPEG file. Now, standard is just regular, what Sony believes what most people will like. Vivid will jack the colors up. I use this mode often with combined with Auto HDR actually, and the results are really good. Neutral is a more flat look. Clear is high contrast, as you can see. More, even more contrast for deep. And if you hit the right arrow, you can adjust these and dial them in. See that? Sharpness, saturation. So these are basically custom JPEG profiles is how I like to look at it. And these are the defaults, and then you could manipulate them to cater to your needs, whatever you like. So pretty cool feature. And that's all accessed through the function menu. And this is configurable, like I said. I'm just going to go back to that and turn that off. All right, guys, so I'm in manual mode. And notice how the, by default, this thumb wheel on the top controls the shutter speed. And then of course the lens aperture is manual, so you gotta turn that, and that'll change your aperture. So notice by default how there's nothing programmed here, here, or here, and that's all buttons. You can actually click that, but it doesn't do anything. Display mode will change your display mode, like so. But anyway, if you want to change these settings here or add settings to it, you just click the menu button up here on the left and you just keep going till you get to the gear icon. And then in here, you will see custom configuration. See that down here? You got the function menu set, which is when you hit the function button here. And then you got custom key right here. All right, so you can see here ISO is already set for custom button one. And that's on the top of the camera. See the custom one button and the custom two button? Custom 1 will give you the ISO feature, which works out nicely. And notice how you can set your low and your high, minimum and maximum. If you hit the right to go over here with the control wheel, you can select this and raise it up, you know, or lower it down, like so. Alright, so it maxes out here at 600 millimeter, as you can see right here. But if you go into the menu, and you go into the zoom setting, you can change that optical zoom only option and you can enable clear image zoom or digital zoom to get uh, 2x with clear image and 4x with digital zoom. Now clear image zoom works really well. The digital zoom, you can actually notice it degrades quality. But check this out. So that just zoomed in right there to an effective 1200 millimeter pretty much. And uh, you know, that's quite impressive. So I just wanted to show you guys that. All right guys, so if you want to view your photos on the camera, you just hit this play button here on the bottom. Hit that, and then you can scroll through and look at your photos. I took some moon shots and video last night. Came out really good. But notice here you can change your display mode as well by hitting the top of the wheel here. And you can go to full screen, like so, or some information, and then back to the histogram, RGB histogram mode, which is what I prefer usually. And videos will show up in the same menu. They finally combined this, which is quite nice. 
So that's playback. And if you want to zoom in, you can just hit the um, zoom toggle and it'll zoom in for you. And then you can see here you got the AEL zoom also, or you can just scroll the dial and it'll zoom out and then you can navigate around. So you zoom in and out like this. All right, and then to get out of there, you can just hit the shutter button if you want. All right, guys, so the bottom line with the Sony RX10 Mark III is, well, you know, it's an excellent camera, bottom line. It clearly is amazing, super powerful. The zoom range is incredible. 600 millimeter is just awesome. I was hoping that this camera would have 400 millimeter when I first heard about it. When I heard it had 600 millimeter, I was like, no way. And, you know, it does hold up to the hype, in my opinion. The video quality is excellent. High ISO is great. The new sensor really pumps out some killer quality, especially in video. The 4K detail is sharp and crisp, and, um, you know, it just has all the good attributes of quality video that I would expect to see, and it's some of the best footage I've ever gotten with a camera, other than the RX10 II and the RX100 series that I just reviewed also is exceptional quality, same sensor. So a few negatives with this camera, um, not really negatives, but just something that I noticed here, these, there's no uh, built-in ND filter like the RX100 series, unfortunately, so you will have to get one for the really bright scenes to screw onto the front. It's a 72 millimeter thread. Also, the lens aperture is variable and it slows down really quick. It switches to f2.8 at 27mm approximately, and then at 35mm it switches to 3.2. At 56mm, f3.5. At 100mm, it switches to f4 all the way out the range. So 100mm f4 up to 600mm. The RX10 II, for example, is 200mm f2.8. So it's f2.8 all the way through and you might think that this one is f2.8 up to 200 millimeter but it's not so I just wanted to make that clear and the other issue I had with this thing is the manual aperture is sometimes a little bit awkward to grab and turn and there's just these two little nubs that stick out and uh, I would like it to be a little bit more you know more nubs on there so you could grab it easier it's uh, you tend to tur grab the zoom ring or something like that as opposed to you know the uh, the actual aperture ring now the focus is extremely fast and accurate. My hit rate was excellent on this and the camera is super versatile and configurable. The button layout is quite nice and the ergonomics are excellent with the large grip and the way the you know zoom works and the shutter button it's all placed really nice. Alright guys so for 1500 US approximately you get an unbelievable all-in-one solution. The video quality is fantastic, the photo quality is fantastic, and the range, the all-in-one usability and range is just remarkable. So that's pretty much it for this review guys and uh, I really hope you got what you were looking for. Please feel free to ask questions and comment below as always and also be sure to subscribe. Support links are also below and I appreciate it. Take care, have a good one.